When I first see a couple, I think the pre-visit philosophy is that the entire visit is going to be focused on treating the woman. I'm an OBGYN, I'm an expert in women's health care, and what we're going to do today is talk just about your wife and what's the matter and why aren't things working. I would say it's nearly half the time that the male partner is there, and when they are there, I'd say it's about half the time that they are completely shocked to learn that the chances that someone is not getting pregnant being from a male factor is just as frequent as it is from a female factor. And there is one in the middle, which means it could be the combination of the two or unexplained. So when I speak to a couple, I explain to them that we're gonna take a look at both of them. Of course, men all, all already freak out, right? Oh my God, what are they gonna do to me? What needles do I need? What blood work, right? They're okay with their wives having tons of blood work done, but they always say, what's next for me? And what I explain is that we're gonna test their blood work to make sure that genetically everything is fine, so that there's no diseases that they carry that overlap with the wife, and also to screen for conditions such as cystic fibrosis, which can greatly impact sperm count and semen values. I then explained to him that we need a semen analysis. This is the foundation of an analyzing a, a male component of the couple's fertility story. And a semen analysis has simply four components. The volume, so how much semen is there, should be about 1.5 cc's or about a little less than a teaspoon. The count, are there at least 15 million sperm per cc? The motility, are at least 40% of them swimming, right? Do you have Michael Phelps, like they're swimming down the way? Or do you have a bunch of, you know, that other guy that no one talks about anymore who just swam in circles? And then the last one is, what do the sperm look like? That's the morphology. Believe it or not, according to the World Health Organization 2010 edition, which is the criteria that we use today, 4% of your sperm have to look normal. 96% of your sperm can look horrendous. And as long as 4% look good, you're considered normal. And what I find is that quite often men have no idea that there are these four parameters that we look at in their semen analysis and that each of those have a different pathway that they take you down for treating the couple's fertility journey. So that's where I always start when I talk to a couple about the risk or the chances that the root of their infertility is in the male fertility problem. As opposed to the female patient who always asks, what can I do? When it comes to treating a male patient, it's more often what he shouldn't do. And what I find is that lifestyle modifications are the number one recommendations that we have for men who have abnormal semen parameters. If everything is fine on the semen analysis and everything is fine in their life otherwise, then don't change anything. But men can actually limit their smoking, either cigarettes, cigars, or marijuana, their alcohol intake, their unhealthy habits, such as high unsaturated fats or a high fat diet because male obesity is negatively associated with semen parameters. And if someone is doing excessive exercise, the classic is the guy who's training for his next bicycle race. So he's riding 100 miles a week in tight shorts because the temperature of the scrotum will greatly impact the quality of the sperm that are being produced. So lifestyle for guys is typically a whole bunch of things to stop doing or don't do. Now there are a couple things you can do to improve your semen parameters. Number one is eat a balanced diet. Many guys don't, and they are shocked to learn that eating a balanced diet is one of the ways that you can limit your free radicals and you can limit the oxidants in your blood and in your system. And we know that those substances can negatively impact semen parameters. Second, take a vitamin. Very few men take a vitamin. I always recommend go to your local CVS or Duane Reed or Walgreens or any just generic pharmacy and buy a normal vitamin off the shelf because even that little intervention will do more than doing nothing. Of course, there are male fertility vitamins which tend to be very expensive. And I always counsel patients that be careful what they're buying that just because it's the cheapest one online doesn't mean it's the same one. But those vitamins typically have CoQ10 in them, which is a substance that's been shown for a long time to improve female fertility and works well for improving male fertility as well. It's a powerful antioxidant and it helps um, improve semen parameters. And lastly, is that when in doubt, try not to cook your balls. 
Simply do not elevate the temperature. If you're a jacuzzi person, stop. If you're a hot steam room person, stop. If you're a heavy workout person, cut it back. When in doubt, keep the temperature as close to normal as you can. And I think that all those little steps that you can take will help improve the semen parameters for the couple who's trying to get pregnant.